Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. I'm gonna to be talking about how to raise meat chickens. Before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. So without further ado, let's get into it. When you decide to raise chickens for meat, you all undoubtedly have questions about whether how to get the best dressed out bird and how to care for them. Since COVID-19 pandemic, there have been serious questions about being asked by individuals and families around the world. These questions include how to become self-sufficient, and sourcing protein due to shortages in poultry at local grocery stores and supply chains. So I'm here to provide information to you on how to raise meat chickens and how to process, when you should process and more details, including the best chicken breeds for meat. So to start off, choosing the right chicken breed for meat. In truth, you can raise any breed of chicken for a meat bird from a teeny bantam to a standard heritage breed to the commercially raised breed of chicken. With that being said, some chickens provide more meat and better flavor than others. So when you decide, to start processing your chickens. There may be a few important factors that will help you decide which chicken breed is best for meat that you'd like to raise. If you wanna know the breeds that are best for meat, we've done an article on the best meat chicken breeds and I'll link to that in the description. All right, so number one, the size of your chicken. Some chicken breeds are larger than others and yield a much larger carcass. Throughout this video, you often see me refer to the Cornish Cross and the Ranger breeds of chickens as the standard choices for meat chickens. This is mainly due to their fast growing abilities and the size when dressed out, which is a much larger than standard breeds. Number two, humane considerations. There's some controversy over the genetics and humane treatment surrounding the Cornish Cross meat chicken. That's because it was developed to grow at an unnaturally rapid rate for the commercial industry to keep up with demand and of course make more money. Unfortunately, the Cornish Cross grows so fast that there can be medical complications, including heart problems and the inability of the bird to support its huge body with its legs. Luckily, there's a feeding schedule that can help offset these problems. More on that later. But if this turns you off, there are alternative birds that grow quickly into a large size with fewer health concerns. One favorite is the Ranger Chicken, often referred to as the Freedom Ranger, Rainbow Ranger, Gray Ranger, and other forms of the name. Alternatively, larger heritage breeds can be used as well, like the Buff Orpington. Number three is time constraints. If you're up against a timeline, for example, preparing for the holidays or looking to source your protein as soon as possible, then maybe you need a bird that finishes out faster than others. In that case, you'll want to research the breeds that your hatchery offers. If you're up against the clock, you'll most likely choose a bird that is labeled as a meat chicken like the Cornish Cross or Ranger. Number four is the taste of meat. Some chickens have slightly different flavors than others, but if you're looking at the typical meat chickens, or standard dual purpose breeds, the taste will not vary all that much. Often the taste has more to do with the way you've fed your chickens rather than the breed of chicken you are raising. Also the older the chicken, the tougher the meat and typically a chicken you have used for egg production and now want to process it for meat is traditionally used for soups and broths. Number five, appearance of the finished product. There's a big difference between the chicken breast in the store, which is most likely from a Cornish cross and that of a heritage breed like the Buff Orpington or Rhode Island Red. Cornish crosses are typically white, large pieces of meat while Cornish crosses have that picture perfect look to them while heritage breeds may have yellow or slate colored skin and a bony appearance. If looks are important, choose a breed that reflects on what you prefer to see on your dinner table. Throughout the remainder of this video, I'll be referring to how to raise large broiler breeds like the Cornish Cross and not heritage breeds. All right, so brooder basics for meat chickens. If you've ever raised layers, your brooder will most likely be good enough for meat chicks as well. With that being said, don't forget that they grow quickly and some of the stronger, larger birds may make it difficult for the others to eat and grow if there's not enough space. All you need is a large tub, tank, or box for your brooder and try to, your best to utilize a container that's easy to clean and will not promote the growth of bacteria. Heating temperatures will remain consistent no matter the breed you're raising. For example, you'll start with either 90 or 95 degrees Fahrenheit in the brooder and reduce it by five degrees weekly until you can turn it off. Always monitor your chicks to ensure that they aren't too cold or hot based on their behavior in the brooder. A hot clutch of chicks will try their best to stay away from the heat source. Cold chicks, on the other hand, will huddle up and sit tightly beneath it, which can also cause suffocation amongst the other chicks on the bottom of the pile. All right, now talking about feeders for meat chickens. If you're familiar with the little red feeders and founts for your layers, you may be able to use these in the first few days to a week after your chicks have arrived. But as they begin to grow, bullies may emerge in the pecking order, limiting feed to the weaker chickens. Hanging feeders and plenty of them, depending on number of meat chickens you'll be raising, will be helpful to prevent overeating and bullying. Additionally, meat chickens 
tend to be a bit lazy and may prefer to lay in open feeders and eat as they do. This causes overeating, food hogging, and bacteria to grow in the feed due to the droppings. To prevent this, try to keep the feeders off the ground or you can use automatic feeders and ensure that all the chickens have access to the food. Same goes for waterers. They can also be quite dirty if not placed strategically off the bedding. Consider employing waterer stands, raised waterers, or automatic cup waterers to keep the bacteria at bay. Now let's talk about the best bedding for meat chickens. Meat chickens need bedding material that it is absorbent and slip free. Newspapers, bare plastic, or anything that doesn't give your chickens traction will only exacerbate leg issues, preventing them from walking and causing them to become trampled and quite possibly die. Your best bet is pine wood shavings and never cedar shavings, which can be toxic. If you wanna know more about chicken bedding, we have a chicken bedding guide. I can link to that in the description. No matter how which bedding you choose, it needs to be changed, rotated more frequently than the typical heritage breed chicken's bedding. This is due to the amount of feed consumed by meat chickens, so keep this in mind when you plan. Consider the amount of bedding and how often you'll need to change it based on how many broilers you'll be raising and the size of your brooder. Lastly, always make sure that your meat chickens are kept clean and living in dry conditions because bacteria love to grow in a wet, dirty brooder. Now let's talk about feeding instructions for meat chickens. When raising Cornish crosses and even some ranger breeds, there are certain feed portions to give your chickens based on their age to prevent death from overeating, medical conditions, and poor meat quality. When you first get your broilers, give them free choice access to their feed for the first week. This means keep their feeders full. During their first week, your chicks will need a lot of protein for proper growth and free choice is perfectly fine at this age. Meat chickens should be fed a 20% protein chick starter during their first three weeks of life. They then can be switched over to an 18% protein grower feed. After a week, take your chickens 12 hours on free choice and 12 hours off and take the feed away during the off hours to prevent overeating. Now let's talk about the types of feeds for meat birds. When you first get your chicks, make sure you're feeding them chick starter. Typically this will be the same for layers as it is for broilers, but always make sure it at least has 20% protein content. You can decide to feed medicated feed or non-medicated feed. Medicated feed protects your chicks from contracting coccidia or coccidiosis when they're most vulnerable to the intestinal infection. Coccidiosis is an infection of the intestinal tract. We've talked about this at length on other videos. It's caused by protozoa found in chicken droppings. It can be deadly. So medicated feed might be worth it in the beginning. At three weeks, your chicks should be switched over to a grower or broiler formula. It's also during that time your meat chickens should be provided with grit to help them digest their food. Now let's talk about moving day. At some point, your chickens will outgrow their brooder. Always try your best to accommodate your chickens as they grow to prevent overcrowding. Some sources say that Cornish crosses only need about two square feet of space per adult chicken. If you can give them more, always do so. Smaller spaces invite pecking, pileups, feces, and overweight chickens. More space gives your chickens more room to move, flap their wings, and exercise their bodies. It's polite to allow them a little room to wiggle and move about and act like a chicken. We prefer free-ranging our rangers. The corners can free-range, but not as willing to do so in our experience. Let's talk about in the coop. Whether you're keeping your meat chickens in a coop or chicken tractor, make sure you implement the same mindset regarding feeder and waterers. Keep them clean off the ground and plentiful so everyone can eat what they need in order to grow and develop into happy meaty chickens. Along those same lines, ensure you can keep feeders and water as clean so bacteria does not grow and make your chickens sick. Now, lastly, knowing when to process your chickens. We have a complete guide of knowing when to process your chickens. If you want, I can link to that in the description. Check that out. But in general, if you're raising Cornish crosses, the rule of thumb is to process them at around eight or nine weeks. And if you follow the above feeding schedule, you should have some nice meat chickens at the same time with very few losses. On the other hand, if you're raising heritage breeds or rangers, your processing date will most likely be pushed back from a few weeks to a few months, depending on the breed you've decided to raise. When it comes down to it, meat chickens should be processed when they've reached the desirable weight for the breed you're raising. With that being said, waiting too long to butcher after a chicken has reached maturity will result in a stringy or tough carcass, in other words, a soup chicken. When raising meat chickens, it's important to understand your breed and always research recommending processing time frames for the type of chicken you're raising. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.